Bitcoin is pumping. Everyone is excited. There's a feeling in the air, but will it continue? That's the million dollar question. In today's video, we're gonna look at this chart right here, which is incredible. Have you seen it? Bitcoin has just peaked its head above the 200 MA for the first time in years. And we're going to really examine the 2020 time that we got above here. Also the prior bear market in 2018, what happened when we finally got above the 200 MA. And we're going to examine the 2015 bear market. And we're going to make some determinations on what we see, if this is going to continue and what that would look like for Bitcoin. Welcome in. If you're new, my name is Steve and we do it differently here. We stand out from the crowd when they go left, we go right. And we base it all on the facts in the charts. Hit that subscribe button. You're gonna absolutely love it here, especially if you like facts, cold, hard, old fashioned facts in the charts, hit that subscribe button. Right now, we're going to examine this chart right here. But I wanted to tell you, on Friday, I'm gonna be in the lab and I'm gonna be cooking up an incredibly powerful bonus video, absolutely free to everyone on our email list. To get on our email list, go to CryptoCrewUniversity.com. Again, CryptoCrewUniversity.com and just fill in your email information here and you'll get a beautiful email on Friday with the banger video that will be completely free. There's no hidden charges or any of that BS. We did a free video last week and it was so much demand, our website crashed. Um, we will be ready this time. CryptoCreeUniversity.com, jump on the email list. You'll also get a free weekly marker report with behind the scenes stuff that we don't discuss here. CryptoCreeUniversity.com. Let's jump into this chart. We've got price action. And we have our 200 MA, we're on the two day chart, Bitcoin US dollar index. And what we see is clear as day. This major moving average right here, Bitcoin had a breakout candle right here. The breakthrough candle was on March 16th. We had our confirmation candle on March 18th and we're currently in this candle right here. And you can see coming out of a, a textbook bear market, the last time Bitcoin did this was 2018, but we'll count the COVID crisis because we did crash below this level and we did break above it holding beautiful support and we know what happened next. We know this level is major. There's no denying that these are the facts in the charts. You can see while we're in a bear market, we will hold it as beautiful support. And as soon as we break it, we start holding it as resistance. And that's when these mega crashes happened. Case in point, we covered it right here on our channel way back in January of last year, January 2022, when we finally broke below this level and we started holding as resistance, we put up major, major, major red flags. You all know that we called the mega crash starting at 48K. So this level, this simple moving average that you can put on your chart right now will clear up the noise. It'll make things simple and clear as to what's happening in the market, but Bitcoin is in a major inflection point. So over the last several months, we've been saying, look, Bitcoin has created the storyline of we bottomed here, we double bottomed here, we had incredibly strong bullish divergence, and we shot up in price. You can see it more clearly on some other charts. We also had the, the MACD cross, right, from before Christmas. We also had this chart right here showing the bottoms. We had our 2018 top here in total market cap. So right now we're on the total market cap. We're on the monthly chart. We had our bottom right here in June of 2022. And the second bottom was in November. This was our first bottom. This was our second bottom. And since then that's held true. Nine months ago, we called the bottom. Just like when we had, this was our first top. This was our second top. Yes, this one went higher, but it's our first top, second top. This is our double top. And we had incredibly strong bearish divergence here. So in the charts, what we know to be true is Bitcoin is in this moving position between this bear market that we've been in for multiple years and transitioning into its new bull run. But the question is, have we started the bull run and will this continue? Will this pump continue? Now we know that it's clear we've had a confirmation candle above the 200 MA on the two day chart. So what does that mean precisely? In order to really examine this, we've got to look past. We've got to look left 
And we have to understand what did Bitcoin do before with this level when we finally had a support? Because you can see for two, four, six, eight days in a row, we held pretty strong resistance before breaking through and confirming as support back here in October of 2015. And we see what happened after that. There was an explosion in price. And you can see all the way dating back all the way to 2011, where we held this as support. We broke it, held it as resistance. We broke above. We held it as support momentarily, breaking down below, holding it as resistance. And right before we actually finally broke through, there was 22 days that we were holding it as resistance. We finally broke through. Once we broke through and confirmed as support, the market really moved in 2011. And same thing happened in 2015. Once we finally broke through, it was eight days then, we finally broke through, it was an explosion in price. So let's examine 2018. We know that this level is critical. We know that when we're having the beginning signs of our bear market, we come down and we hold as support. And then that's when the high majority of people are like, you know what? We're gonna make a new all time high. It happens every single market, but we always break that market structure. And one of the telltale signs is we break through this moving average that's right here. As soon as we break through and we start holding as resistance, that's when these crashes really, really take form. So here we were holding really, really strong resistance for a period of a month or more. And then when we finally broke through, we had an explosion in price. So each cycle, 2011 had an explosion in price after holding support, 2015 explosion in price after holding support, 2018 an explosion in price after holding support, 2020 an explosion in price after holding support. But 2020 was a little bit more methodical. We had held support for an extended period of time, 84 days. So we spent three months really catching our breath. This was a pivotal time for Bitcoin at the moment because we had this ABC correction, which took a couple of years to play out. And the COVID crisis really put a damper. Bitcoin had to catch its breath. It caught it directly on this moving average that we're covering right here. So we can look at the facts and the charts and determine what we believe is going to be happening, right? Now you remember, we had this top number one, we came right down to where? We came right down to this 200 MA. We bounced all the way back up. We had our double top. And then what happened? We crashed all the way back down to where? We crashed right down to our 200 MA. So if you're looking at this and, and you're thinking to yourself, ah, this moving average is not important. You're not looking at the facts. The facts are the facts. This is a major moving average. It keeps things really simple and clean, which is why you just subscribed because you like this kind of content, which covers just the facts. I don't tell you what you want to hear. I tell you the facts. So here we are today and we have our first confirmation candle. So nobody can sit here and say, this is bad news for Bitcoin. Month after month after month, when we've been covering this bear market and we called the bottom and the second bottom and we said Bitcoin is starting to turn a corner. And then when we got up here, that was the largest rally that we've had in a bear market. But every bear market does that. We have a large rally and we're usually faced with a wall in a decision and Bitcoin has made its decision. It's coming through here now. What I will say is when we came through here in 2018, it was short lived. It did not last a long time. It was a short shoot up in price, but it, it was not withstanding because we didn't create the proper market structure. So could that happen to Bitcoin? Could Bitcoin come here and have a, a rather quick explosion in price, but it be short lived and then us retest the base? Or is it going to be more like 2015 where we finally break above and it's more methodical and we're building our base as we go and it's more strategic that way in, in more of a textbook breakout? Which is it going to be? What is going to happen? What should you expect? First and foremost, the facts are the facts. If we break above this 200 MA and we're holding as support, it's only good news. And you can see we've been holding it as support through this entire period and then resistance in this entire period. It's been a couple of years since we've, hold it, we've held it as really strong support. So this is a major win for Bitcoin. It's a major push forward. Um, you can see in one of the other charts I'm going to show you that Bitcoin 
was faced with a critical test. You can see in the Gaussian channel here on the five day. Did you see these yellow box right here in 2015? The yellow box right here and the yellow box right here. We were faced with the same test every single bear market. We have the largest bear market rally and Bitcoin was faced with a test. Are you going to get through the Gaussian channel or are you going to get rejected from the Gaussian channel? 2015, we were rejected from the Gaussian channel. 2018, we got through the Gaussian channel. The bad news about 2018, it was short-lived. The good news about 2015, even though we got rejected, it helped us to build proper market structure. Thus, the bull run was substantially stronger because we had that strong foundation. Picture a house. If you're building a house and you just want to build it quickly, yeah, you can have a tornado come through or windstorm and just knock down the house. But if you build the proper structure and foundation and you spend time methodically doing that, it doesn't matter what kind of storm is going to come in. It's a long withstanding test of time. And that's the difference that I see playing out in front of us now. We're showing signs that this could be a good move for Bitcoin, but it, not, it might not be withstanding. It's very early to tell, but these are some preliminary concerns I have. Also, oh, in a little bit, I'm going to give you a major trading tip. So stick around to the end of the video, a major trading tip that could help you tremendously. It's gonna be completely free, straight from my heart to you. Uh, as you know, I started trading when I was 16 years old and I was ridiculously terrible. I made every stupid, silly mistake you can possibly make as a 16 year old kid. And I wanna share one of the biggest ones, one of the biggest lesson learned that will save you a ton of money. So I'm gonna be doing that in a moment. Also, if you love charts and you love facts in the charts and you want clear and concise data that you can look at to help you make better decisions, we put out a ton of value on Twitter. Crypto Crew you on Twitter with pure cold hard facts in the charts that will help you tremendously. Crypto Crew you on Twitter. So what do we make of all this? We know that my position hasn't changed in many, many, many months. Has it changed now that we've moved above this 200 day moving average? What do I think now? Well, we're Mr. Consistency. Way back in, let's see what time it was. It was in June of 2021. We put out a major warning that Bitcoin entered the Gaussian channel, our quicksand. So a couple years ago, we said, hey, watch out. The mega crash here, we called this bottom the second bottom. And we haven't changed our tune, but we will when the facts and the charts have new facts. This is a new fact. So have we changed our tune? My stance is, look, the worst case scenario is still Bitcoin could retest its base. That's still a potential. How much of a potential? That's losing some steam, but it's still a potential. But we've always said the bull run, it looks like it's going to start in 2023. We said this nine months ago. We haven't changed that, although the whole world was against us when we made that call first. But it was based on all the facts that we study in the charts. It's looking more realistic now. It is up for debate whether the bull run has officially started. There are a lot of charts that we're going to cover, including this one where this only flashes when the bottom is in. This has our complete double bottom. Uh, textbook double bottom and we have other charts like this one which flashed in November of last year that the bottom was in that the bull run is on its way but has the bull run officially started it's really close I'm gonna be doing another video today with some trouble that remains right above our head in how I think we're gonna perform with that so make sure you hit the subscribe button and now I'll get into my trading tip for you but getting above this 200 day moving average is major we still need to see how it's going to play out over the coming weeks weeks to see if this is going to be a short-lived rally or a long-standing one. But either way, this is a major step in the right direction for Bitcoin. It's a major step to have our bull run start in 2023. I'm very excited about it. Now, trading tip. We've all been there when you make a trade, right? You're in a trade and it's not going your way and the market is falling, the market is not doing what you thought it would be, you're losing money, and then you're losing more money, and then you get really upset, and then you pull your trade, and you're, you're down money, and you revenge trade. You do 
you try to make up those losses you just had that are really gunt wrenching in the next trade. And usually when you revenge trade, you follow none of your rules. You follow pure emotion. You're trying to hit the home run. You're trying to throw the Hail Mary and you're trying to win back all of these losses you just had. Or let's say hypothetically you had two losses in a row. You followed your strategy in the first one. The second one, you got a little bit of emotional. You pulled it early and then you try to revenge trade to make up that trade. We've all been there. So what should you do instead? You need to have a bulletproof plan. You have to have all these cold hard steps you follow no matter what. No matter if it's Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, no matter if it's sunny, no matter if it's windy, it doesn't matter what it is. These are your cold hard rules to follow in trading. You make a trade if X, Y, and Z are met, and then you follow it if X, Y, and Z are withstanding. You enter the position only if this, you exit only if this, and you follow those rules no matter what. That's the only way to counteract it. There's a reason 90 plus percent of people will fail as traders. It's emotion. Emotion is a money killer. If you wanna light your money on fire, continue trading with emotion. If you don't have a strategy, which the high majority of people don't, let's face it, let's be honest, there's a, there's a good chance you don't have a strategy. If you're my student, you've got an incredible strategy. Even if you've taken some of my free courses, you have a little bit of a strategy. I need you to get a bulletproof strategy, whether it's with me or by yourself or somewhere, you have to get it. If you're not exactly sure how to get it, my courses walk you step by step, how to get a strategy, how to build it, and how to build a bulletproof strategy. But you have to have a strategy and you have to follow it, no matter what. If discipline is your weakness, you shouldn't be a trader because discipline has to be your strength in order to be a successful trader. Otherwise, you're gonna be revenge trading, trading on emotion, and that is a very dangerous step. Now, if your question is, okay, Steve, all of these sounds, sounds great, this is super helpful, but what should I do now? Should I get into Bitcoin now or should I wait? That means you haven't been following my channel. When we were down here at 15,000 and 16,000 this entire time, every single video I made, I said repeatedly, like a broken record, it's more risky to be out of Bitcoin than to be in Bitcoin. I said it time and time again. I said this was not financial advice. I'm just trying to help people this entire period here when Bitcoin was down here. So if you're still not in, you didn't follow us then. Now, if you're still not into it, this is still the very, very beginning of the bull run, or if not, the very, 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 very tail end of the bear. So it's still a great time in the big picture. If you're looking to make a Lamborghini tomorrow and you're looking to make big dollars, you shouldn't be in crypto. You're not here for the right reasons. But if you're in it for the right reasons and you're in it for the next several years, we either just entered the bull run or the bear market is just about to be over. So I think that answers your question. I'm gonna try to do another video today. Hit that subscribe button. Make sure you go on the email list. I'm gonna be dropping a bomb on Friday. I'm gonna be in the lab until Friday, making it special for you, for our email list people for free. Hopefully our site doesn't crash again. CryptoCareerUniversity.com, plug in your information. I'll see you right back here in the next video. Peace and love to the fellow underdogs. Do you wanna know when to buy and when to sell? Click this video right now.